What's up everyone? The silicon battle of Intel versus AMD has been intriguing to say the least. Most especially in recent years with AMD catching up and even surpassing the long-time popularity of Intel to a degree. So if you're in the market for Team AMD, whether it be for your next PC setup or maybe an AMD equipped laptop, we'll be going over a simple guide to help you choose which AMD CPU to get. It's Luis of Yugatech. Let's get to it. Before we get into AMD specifically, let's get acquainted with some common and important processor lingo. A core is a processing unit within a CPU. A CPU with more cores can perform more tasks simultaneously, which can lead to better performance in multi-threaded applications. A thread, on the other hand, is a virtual processing unit within a CPU. It's a sequence of instructions that can be run independently by a processor or a CPU. Overall, threads help to make computer programs run faster and smoother by breaking up tasks into smaller pieces that can be executed independently. Clock speeds are measured in gigahertz. This refers to the number of cycles a processor can perform per second. Higher clock speeds generally lead to better performance, but this can vary depending on the specific processor architecture and other factors. You will also see on each processor spec sheet L1, L2, and L3 cache. A cache is simply a small amount of memory within a CPU that stores frequently used data for quick access. More cache can lead to better performance, especially in applications that rely heavily on memory access. L1, L2, and L3 are different levels of memory on a processor, which helps reduce latency and increase speed of memory access. When the processor needs to access data, it checks the cache, starting with the smallest and fastest type of cache, which is L1, and progresses to the largest and slowest type, L3, until the data is found. You'll usually see L3 cache most notably listed among AMD processors with the base Ryzen 5 having 32 megabytes and the highest end Ryzen 9 up to 128 megabytes. TDP, or Thermal Design Power, refers to the maximum amount of power a CPU can consume and the amount of heat it can generate under normal usage. This is important to consider when selecting a CPU and cooler for your build. Let's now start with how AMD names their processors. Since with their all-new 7000 series in 2023, they sort of switched things up with their naming scheme. The first digit refers to the year or generation of the processor, with 7 designated for 2023. You'll usually see it referred as the Ryzen 7000 series, with the latest being the Ryzen 7040 series in this generation. Then the next is the market segment. This ranges from 1 to 9 and simply states what type of AMD processor it is. 1 is Athlon Silver, 2 Athlon Gold, 3 and 4 for Ryzen 3, 5 and 6 for Ryzen 5, 7 for Ryzen 7, 8 for both Ryzen 7 and 9, and 9 for Ryzen 9. Next is the chip's architecture, where 1 refers to Zen 1, 2 for Zen 2, so on and so forth, with Zen 4 being AMD's latest architecture. This is particularly important since AMD tends to mix different architectures in the same series. So a processor's generation itself technically doesn't indicate how advanced or modern it is. Such as the Ryzen 7000 mobile chips currently having both Ryzen 7040 and 730 versions, simply meaning one is built on Zen 4 and the other on Zen 3 architecture. The fourth number before the letter lets consumers know different chips with different versions of the same architecture. It's either a zero for a slower chip and five for a faster or upper model chip. The last is a letter that indicates the chip's TDP. Mobile processors ending in HX have a 55 watt TDP. Those ending in HS are up to 35 watts. Q are meant for ultra thin laptops with TDPs ranging from 15 to 28 watts. C are for Chromebooks and E are the low powered 9 watt versions of U chips, but in hindsight are fanless. While in desktops, you'll usually see X to mean a version of a processor with a higher clock speed, with the latest being those that end in X3D that feature AMD's 3D V-Cache technology to boost gaming performance. Now with that out of the way, let's get to the actual processors themselves. 
The Ryzen line of processors are designed for desktops and laptops. They come in different tiers ranging from the entry-level Ryzen 3 to the highest-end Ryzen 9. Nowadays, they're commonly built on the Zen 4 architecture which offers improved performance and efficiency over previous generations. The Ryzen 5 series is designed for mainstream desktop and laptop users who need a balance of performance and value. And they're generally the best option for most people. Especially with the 7000 series and the Zen 4 architecture, they've become a pretty good chip for gaming, content creation, and productivity tasks. Ryzen 5 desktop processors include both the Ryzen 7 7600 and 7600X. These processors typically have 6 cores and 12 threads and offer strong single-threaded and multi-threaded performance for most users. The Ryzen 7 series of processors are designed for users who need more performance than the Ryzen 5 series can offer. Currently, there are three, the Ryzen 7 7700, the 7700X, and the 7800X3D. These processors typically have 8 cores and 16 threads and offer even stronger single-threaded and multi-threaded performance. They're a good choice for users who need to run demanding applications, do content creation, or even high-end gaming. The Ryzen 9 series is designed for high-end desktop and workstation users who need the best performing Ryzen chip. Now there's a handful of them with the Ryzen 7 7900, 7900X, and 7900X3D having 12 cores and 24 threads. Meanwhile, the highest end Ryzen 9 7950X and 7950X3D have 16 cores and 32 threads. They're a good choice for users who need to run the most demanding applications such as 3D rendering, scientific simulations, or those who just want one of the fastest chips out there for gaming. Now, you may be wondering, where is the more budget-friendly Ryzen 3? Well, in 2023, there aren't any new 7000 series Ryzen 3 processors with the last made widely available being the Ryzen 3 3000 series launched way back in 2020, which were some of the last Zen 2 architecture Ryzen chips we saw. Then we have the Athlon series, which is designed for budget-conscious users who still need solid performance. These processors typically have 4 cores and 4 threads and offer good value for basic operating tasks such as web browsing, email, and office productivity. Nowadays, you can see 7000 series Athlon processors on budget laptops. However, if you're looking to get an Athlon processor for your low-budget desktop build, you're kind of stuck with the Athlon 3000G which was released back in 2019. The Threadripper series, as the name implies, can hypothetically rip through threads since they're designed for high-end desktop and workstation users who need extreme performance. To show you how overpowered AMD's Threadripper series is, one of their fastest chips, the AMD Ryzen 9 7950X, has a mass TDP of 170 watts, 16 cores, and 32 threads. You know, that's pretty impressive if you ask me. And the Threadripper lineup can get a max TDP of up to 280 watts, which is insane. On top of that, they typically have up to 64 cores and up to 128 threads, offering unmatched, single-threaded, and multi-threaded performance. They're a good choice for users who need to run the most demanding applications such as 8K video editing, 3D rendering, and large-scale simulations. You might also have heard of AMD's Pro lineup of processors like Ryzen Pro, Athlon Pro, and even Threadripper Pro. Although you can find these chips on retail, these are usually made for enterprise or companies and are more focused on security. And that wraps it up on the processors. But here are some other things to note. Both Ryzen and Threadripper processors use AMD's Zen architecture, which is designed to deliver high performance and efficiency. The latest Zen 3 architecture offers improvements in both single-threaded 
and multi-threaded performance over previous generations. The Ryzen and Threadripper processors use different sockets, so it's important to make sure your motherboard is compatible with the processor you choose. Ryzen processors use the AM5 or in older models the AM4 socket, while Threadripper processors use the TRX4 or STRX4 socket. AMD processors are known for their ability to be overclocked, which can improve performance even further. This is simply the process of increasing the clock speed of a CPU beyond its factory specifications. However, overclocking can also increase power consumption and heat output, so it's important to make sure your cooling system is up to the task. Then there's the topic of APUs. APU stands for Accelerated Processing Unit. It's a type of computer processor that combines a CPU and a GPU on the same chip. The majority of Ryzen processors come with their integrated Radeon graphics, which can be a good option for basic graphic tasks in budget systems for laptops where a dedicated graphics card isn't necessary. However, if you plan to use your system for more demanding applications like gaming or professional video editing, a dedicated GPU is recommended. AMD processors are generally priced competitively compared to their Intel counterparts, making them a good choice for budget-conscious users. However, high-end Threadripper processors can be quite expensive, so it's important to choose the right processor that fits your needs and budget. So that wraps it up for this guide to AMD processors in 2023. Which do you prefer, Intel or AMD? We'd love to hear why you prefer one over the other down in the comments. If you enjoyed this guide, be sure to drop a like and subscribe to our channel and follow for the best tech content here in the Philippines. Be sure to catch us on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. And visit yugatech.com for all your tech content needs here in the Philippines. Once again, this has been Luis of Tech. Thank you and take care.